right, we're ready to get started. And today we have an artist with us. His name is Steve Pierce, and he is from the Pittsburgh area. And he is more of an artist that does uh, spray painting more so spray painting and uh, we're going to ask him a few questions and see what he has to say about his art so um well tell our, our viewers a little bit about your background and how you got started in in the art art world well so um growing up it, i was really into com um like um coloring books mm -hmm. um other kids were playing of G.I. Joe's and I was doing coloring books and like mm -hmm. it got to the point where I was like really concentrating on staying in the lines. Mm -hmm. And then um, one day when I was about five, six years old, my older brother called me into his room. I thought he was going to punk me, you know, or <laughs> <laughs> beat me up or something. And, and, and he was like, no, 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 come here, sit down next to me. And he was drawing and he was drawing Garfield characters. Wow. And so he taught me how to draw the Garfield characters. And that was it. That was pretty much all she wrote. And then I, I took art classes throughout school. Um, I was in AP art my junior and senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and I lived down in Gainesville, Florida at the time. And um, one of the requirements was to send our artwork to the Florida State Fair held in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And I s sent one piece down and I won overall, um, first place overall in the entire thing and got an art scholarship, which I used at the Pittsburgh Art Institute oh, um, nice. for graphic design. Oh, um, nice. And then I kind of got out of it um because i had all this outside pressure you know like you know telling me that art wasn't a good career and all this stuff and so i so i kind of put it i kind of put it off a little bit i mean i was still doing it here and there but i kind of put it off and then um was trying to you know doing construction and doing all these different jobs trying to get a career you know mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then one day I, I came home and I just sat in complete silence. I sat in the dark and just sat there and was like, what am I doing? You know, just what am I doing? And the next day I went out and I bought art supplies and mm -hmm. I've been doing it ever since. This was around 2013, 2014. And then in around 2015, I started showing up my work publicly. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of us uh, kind of went through that where you know people told us well you can't make a career and it is hard i mean it's not something you can just step out there and oh all of a sudden yeah. everybody loves your work you know yeah. uh it's a struggle but um yeah i wished i would have went to the art institute i now they don't have it so right, i kind of yeah. took it a little bit in college and almost minored in it and then i took some other classes at community college but yeah i mean it's just like it's sad that you can't really make a a big living at it but i guess once you step out into that world it, you're good you know after that i don't know how it is for you but um uh, it just seems like i know a girl that um she went to the art institute and she does pastel work and she sells her painting for thousands you know yeah. her paintings are so well known and stuff so it just depends I guess. Well, I'm, it's, it's, it's getting better for me. I'm starting to get a lot more commission work. I'm starting to get a lot more uh, notoriety. Um, so it's, it's, it's coming along. It's a slow process, um, but it's coming along. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot more work and a lot more sales. That's now, good. So. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's always good to know. It's encouraging for other artists. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just got to stick with it. You know? I know. Well, that's it. You do. You have to be persistent. You know, you can't just let it go. Uh, yeah. And it, it's like anything else. I mean, it's like if you're a musician and you don't play for a while, you know, you have to get back into it and you have to like start practicing and art is exactly, a practice. Yeah. yeah. So, well, uh, now can you explain the type of art that you do? So I, I describe, I dubbed it myself as um, cartoon realism is what I like to call it. Um, it's with the black, it's got black contour lines and, and, and it's, it's somewhat cartoony, but yet the, it's got detailed. So it's a little bit more than cartooned. Um, 
I guess some people call it neo pop, some people call it street art or street mm -hmm. pop, um, but I call it cartoon realism. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically uh, a mix between spray paint and acrylic paint, mm -hmm. and yeah. Well, I saw something on your uh, website that was more abstract, also. So yeah, you have a little bit of that in there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So. Um, Okay, so I guess I you kind of covered how you got into the world of art uh, and how that all started. And well, um, so I guess where do you get your inspirations from? Uh, um, I get my inspiration from you know, <laughs> a lot of it actually does come from my yeah. head, but uh, mm -hmm. like a lot of stuff from the outside world, you know, sometimes like there might be something that I, I'm trying to to portray into my art or express through my art. Like maybe some like from oppression or heartache or um, sorrow, mm -hmm. um, and then other times it could be just something funny or something satire. Um, but usually, it just comes to my comes to my head. Like mm -hmm. this is like my number one tool, nice. um, and I'll think about something and think about the way I want to do it and go from there. That's, that's nice. I, I can't be that creative. That's why I was wondering, you know, like I, I have that creativeness, but I can't just think, I guess I have to look at things too, like look at different pictures and then come up with my own idea, but it just doesn't pop out of my head. <laughs> you know, I got to do some research on it. So yeah, that's, that's really, uh, that's really a gift when you can do that. I, I have another friend that we both say the same thing. It's very difficult for us to just be creative and there's other people that can just come up with all these ideas and we wonder how do they do that you know it just so it's all in the brain <laughs> maybe it's right left brain i don't know right and left brain i don't know so um okay well who has been your biggest influence on your work uh, as far as other artists as far as other artists um i really i really uh, like the works of uh, Boscarat, Herring, uh, Jackson Pollock, um, Picasso, Van Gogh, um, and then um, Dr. Seuss, believe it or not. Um, Dr. Seuss, a lot of people don't understand just how great of an artist Dr. Seuss really was. Hmm. Like, it goes beyond his, his storybooks. Like, I mean, he was a, a fantastic sculpturer, uh, a fantastic painter. I mean, it, it, a, 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 my brother bought me a book one time and I, I had no idea. And it was all about Dr. Seuss's artwork. And it's oh. absolutely amazing and um, how, oh. how awesome of a, of a, of a um, artist he, he truly was. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really realize that. Did he illustrate his own books or did he have someone else illustrate them? Do you know? He was, he illustrated his, that was, that's all his illustrations. Oh, and I, I believe even, even the entire story was written too by him. Yes. Um, he, yeah. And then he, he, and then he, but I believe he did the illustrations as well. Oh, that's pretty neat. I never, and, and, but a lot of his artwork has those characters in it, like his, his personal stuff, like mm -hmm. his paintings and his sculptures. Like he would take, um, like animal horns um and then make like a like a taxidermy of like his character that he does in the, in the children's books uh -huh. but then add the horn to it you know yeah. and so th that's what i really 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 like of his stuff the, yeah. the, tax yeah. the fake taxidermy stuff yeah. interesting i'll have to uh, see if I yeah can you gotta check it out him. yeah because yeah. um i always brought well um, i bought like the series for my kids you know uh, mm -hmm. all his books and everything but never realized that he was into that because when I studied the art, it was like the impressionism and all that kind of thing. So I only know impressionists. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know Van Gogh and all that, you know, Jackson yeah. Pollock and all those things. But yeah, that's interesting. Very cool. So, um, so uh, in what what kind of like I guess techniques and and the types of mediums that you do use in your artwork, um, especially in your last few pieces. Or is it like a consistency of the same things? It's, I know these are differently it's, it's, worded probably than what I gave you, but it's similar. So I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's, 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 it's consistent to the point where I use very of uh, the same 
mediums. I, I'll, like I use acrylic paint um, and then I use spray paint. Occasionally I'll use house paint um, or, or, or special enamels and stuff, but usually mm -hmm. it's, it's just spray paint or acrylic. Um, sometimes I do pieces where it's just all acrylic and sometimes I do pieces with a mixture of both. Um, it just it just all depends on what I'm trying to create. Nice. Nice. Okay, that's cool. So um so I guess I, I guess how do you get inspired? But I mean I guess it comes through your creativity, your own creativity or your do you like look at different books to get inspired? Do you ever get like dry, you know, that you can't you can't come up with something or what I usually do if I if I can't get inspired, I usually what I do is I is I read. Um um, I, I, I read reading like again, it's it's the brain. So mm -hmm. it, and I like to read graphic novels and comic books, because mm -hmm. um, you got that visual um, aspect too, um, and that helps gets the creative juices flowing and and helps mm -hmm. me, you know, get out of the rut kind of. So okay. yeah, because sometimes I mean I'm like at a like dry spot right now. <laughs> well, I think I, I think. During the winter months, it's hard for artists. Yeah. You got the, you got a little bit of the seasonal depression in there. Yeah. It's cold. It's dark. Like, like earlier, um, you know. It, yeah, so true. I mean, I'm struggle. I struggle with that every year during during yeah. these times. You know. Yeah. Well, I think COVID did a lot to me too. You know, you just like yeah. you can't do anything to get out and look at stuff, and you mm -hmm. know, get that inspiration somewhere. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a lousy winter for me. <laughs> I mean, I usually, uh, well, I usually do something on YouTube every week, and I just haven't had, you know, the desire to do it right now. So hopefully it'll come back, hopefully in the yeah. summer. You know? But anyways, okay. So that's what I wondered, how you overcame the creative block, and I guess that was uh, one of the things. Now, if you had, now this is a question I didn't have on there, but if you had an opportunity to change anything and, you know, to guide you to this, what would you have done? I mean, to be, do different. I, I would have um, not listened to the naysayers. I would have, uh, I would have continued on my path to art, mm -hmm. you know, from high school and not have gone to try to do other careers. I would have just stuck to it, but I was, I was listening to, other people instead of listening to myself. So yeah. I would go back and change that. Yeah. I think That's I would have I too. Um I I didn't go to college right away. Um I went later in life only because I felt I had a need to do that. But um yeah I I think I would have done things differently for sure. You know, because mm -hmm. at that time that the art institute was pretty pretty much alive in Pittsburgh. And um mm -hmm. But then there was that thing, you know, like people said, well, you can go there and nothing happens, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I think it, it can happen if you make it happen, too. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the other thing. Well, so. the Art Institute wasn't there to teach people art. It was there to improve on your skills. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people went there thinking that the Art Institute was going to make you an artist when all it was going to do is make you a better artist. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so like there was, there was people in my class that didn't understand that. And so they, it, it, it wasn't to make you an artist. It was to make you a better artist. Better yeah. artist. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting too. Now I, I just wondered, like, I love the painting behind you and I wanted to see if you could explain that a little bit to the audience. Okay. Well, I can try to get really better cool. for sure. There we go. There we go. So, that looks good. So it's, it's about five foot by four foot. It's hard to see on this, but five foot by four foot. It's framed. It was a wooden sign, um, an old dilapidated wooden sign that the background is spray paint. And then the rose in the middle is acrylic. Okay. Looks dimensional. You know, the way it's, uh, you did, a, you know, it really pops that rose out. <laughs> the shading skill, yeah. Yeah, um, that's very nice. 
It's it's at, the title of the piece is called um, Reversal of Fortune Part Two because I have a part one that's a smaller one. It was just a red background, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to sh you know show the the grayscale on something in the foreground versus that grayscale being in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's the reversal of of the colors. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like to paint flowers, actually. Flowers is one of the things that I do like to paint. Um, nice. You can use your imagination with them is, is uh -huh. why, why they're so good. They don't because it doesn't matter. You, uh -huh. the, 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 the petals and everything and the leaves and everything could be any, any way you want them to be. That's true. You know what yeah. I mean? Because right. like, no flower is alike and nobody can say it's not a flower. I mean, so... There, it's a. I like to paint stuff that you can use your imagination to. I don't have to use reference pictures unless I really need to, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't, um, I don't do a lot of sketching. Like I don't do. When I do a piece, I I just dive into it. Like mm -hmm. I, I just it's all from up here, and I just dive into it. Occasionally, I'll use a reference picture, which I'll I'll Google something and, and bring it up, like maybe some clip art or something. To uh -huh. just to give some sort of reference, so I'm like, oh yeah, that's how how it goes. But uh -huh. um, I I don't do sketches. The only time I do a sketch is if I'm sketching it on the canvas to for my placement. Other than that, I, well, I don't. like I have I, I have a ton of sketchbooks at home. Yeah, and, it, and it's all it's all you know just notes like in grocery grocery <laughs> list and like you know I do that poetry too. and stuff like that so yeah. it's like yeah it's kind of funny because that's how I mean I don't um do any color you know like thumbnails or any of that kind of stuff yeah. when I do anything I, I don't know why people think that's important <laughs> to me. I, mean, I know throughout it, 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 throughout school you're taught that you're, you're yeah. taught to do the thumbnails you're taught to do all these sketches and the only time I ever do any kind of thumbnails, if I'm really having trouble trying to lay out a particular piece, uh -huh. um, especially I, I like to work big. So okay. especially like if you if you work big for so many years and then you need to do something smaller on a smaller scale, oh, so you kind of have to adjust it. So sometimes uh -huh. I'll do thumbnails for that reason. Uh -huh. um, but other than that. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, mean, I don't do any kind of sketching at all. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, like for the lights and darks. Well, I, I for some reason, I can come up with the color wheel or color the way I want it in my head. That's the only thing I can really do. I don't have to, like, look at a color wheel and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick this one and this one because it's the opposite and this is going to be. But I don't do that. I just I know how I'm going to do it. You know, yeah. it's in my head how I know. Uh, some people have that hard time trying to figure out colors and what they're going to do with them. So it's the same thing. And um, um, I have no problems with uh, color, obviously. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I'm the same way with colors. Like, if 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 you commission me for a piece and you tell me your idea, I already have ideas before we're done talking. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm already got the cowers kind of sort of picked out. I already kind of got the layout picked out. I kind of already have the idea and where I'm going to go with it already mm -hmm. before I even, even attempt to start up before I even pick up a brush or a pencil or anything. Oh, nice. It's just yeah. like, I, I'm already, already got, it, got it together. Out. Yeah. We're pretty much, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously it, it will change and, and everything, but I pretty much know where I'm going with that piece. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Now, do you have any, <laughs> there's more questions because I always have That's questions. That's all right. <laughs> but um, like when you do get a commission and you do start it, do you ever have to change it in order to suit the person? I've never had to yet. Um, I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, but, hopefully but, not, you know, because it's a pain when it does. You know? It is. It is. But see, I think. What helps me with what like, commissions and why I haven't had to do that yet mm -hmm. is because when I start, before I even start, I ask a lot of questions. Yeah. I ask, okay, what kind of calories are you thinking about? Do you want it vertical? Do you want it horizontal? Do you want this, this et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I ask the client a ton of questions before yeah. I even start. And yeah. then when I do start and I get it laid out, if, if there's something, if there's anything that I'm quite not sure about and I still didn't quite get an answer for or whatever, I'll ask it again before I even 
throw paint on it. Mm -hmm. um, but usually it works out. It works out. Yeah. The, the yeah. clients that I have. And, and it, the, the only thing I, that I worry about with doing commissions is the entire time I'm doing, I'm like, are they going to like it? You know, yeah, you're yeah, always yeah. constantly are like, are they going to like it? And then you just got to go for it. And if they don't like it, you just have to do it over. But I've never had that problem every time I've done it. Yeah, they're like well, blown but, away by it. So yeah, I I've never really had any problem either. If I have a commission, I usually, <clears throat> like you say, you ask a lot of questions. Uh, I do like steps too. You know, like I'll do a certain step and I'll let the client look at that. Is this is is this am I on the right path for you? You know, even though you ask mm -hmm. the questions, you want to still make sure they're content with what you're doing because everybody has a different idea of it in their head like it's, mm -hmm. it's done on canvas or paper or whatever so yeah it makes it a little easier but uh mm -hmm. yeah well you know what this was really interesting i really enjoyed talking with you uh it, it uh we had some good questions here and you came up with some <laughs> really good answers <laughs> <laughs> So, well, uh, now, like in the summer here, where, do you have any festivals that you have already booked or? Actually, not yet, but there there are some festivals that I do every year. Like I do Mill Millville Music Festival every year. Um, I do uh, Gare Fest every year, which is up in Sandy Lake. Um, but I do have a I do have a show coming up on the February twenty sixth. It's over at the Sleeping Octopus. It's the Yingling Mansion in Wilkinsburg. Oh, um, nice. and I'm, I'm going to be live painting for that. It's like okay. a, a post Valentine's day kind of thing where it's not, I guess there's going to be like puppet shows and like, you know, I don't know, but, uh, so I'll, I'll be live painting at that. Cool. That'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and then that other one that you said was, uh, Millville music. Festival. Millville. Oh, I do okay. that every year. Yeah. Okay. Cause, um, my husband played there couple years ago in the millville uh with a band my my husband's in a band so That's cool, um, yeah. he's not in that band anymore but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, we played there a couple years <laughs> and then That's cool. COVID hit. yeah everything went south when covid hit so <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh good okay well maybe we'll get to see you somewhere yeah definitely definitely all right well thank you very much and uh well, it was thank nice you talking with you and We'll see you again. Bye-bye. All right. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.